Indeed, we are so blessed to have the gift of a life. Equally here on Good Morning Uganda, we have a full lineup of informative, educative, but also conversational things that we are going to be dialoguing about. Robert Chirabo, what do we have on Good Morning Uganda agenda? We're going to be looking at uh, the NSSF midterm. Uh, that is what is happening in Parliament. More of that from the workers' perspective with, uh, that is Asha Were Wilson, representing, of course, Workers' Union, the National Workers' Union. He'll be with us. Indeed, that's been a big question mark. Everyone has been asking and says they, they said we could, you know, get our money midterm. People were already planning for this money, but of course the pauses and stops here and there. A solution is yet to be found. Felix Nkunda, in our 7 o'clock hour, we do have the newsreel. What should we expect? Well, of course, we'll be looking at uh, trying to digest and dissect the issue of uh, pregnancies for teenagers. And most recently, when the report came out, that we've seen lots of rise in at least double pregnancies for people who are between the ages of 12 to the ages of 20. Teenage pregnancy uh, statistics are staggering, especially under the pandemic, where we've had children not going to school, affecting that rate increasingly. But also, we do have nature crying. Yesterday, someone posted a picture in the group of ducks crossing the road in Kajansi, mm -hmm. simply because they destroyed their home that used to be where the express highway is today. Molen okay. Kenyana, what do we expect in weather, climate and nature? Yes, we do follow up on uh, the weather that we are expecting for this time of the year. We did see the rains for yesterday, obviously causing floods across the city. But also there is a report about food insecurity across the East African region. We want to dive in and see which areas have been in, uh, highlighted. And also we see more heat and uh, more record-breaking temperatures across Australia hitting the 50s. So we'll see that more in the nature and weather segment. And that way, the Fantastic Four have given you a hint on what you should be expecting here on Good Morning Uganda this morning. So stay tuned to UBC all the way to 9 o'clock. Of course, we do expect the aftermath of what we had yesterday as the Stanbic Uganda Cup semi-final. The first one happened and we await another one tomorrow. Ruben Pima Chibirango will be with us later on to actually give us a roundup in that direction. But as we start off, allow us to say to you, Officially, good morning. Good morning to you, Felix. Good morning, Priscilla. How are you? Very good. How are you? It's an awesome morning. Clearly, uh, away from the ambiences of nature, where we, we used to uh, spend some time at least outside, and uh, most recently been doing that. If you noticed, uh, some people had kind of sort of like got an adoption. Yeah. Uh, some of us had started choosing Woodruff in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, somehow, I think it skipped my mind. I was only surprised when I had someone say that. I'm like, okay, that was meant to go that way. So, but, but, but truth of the matter is that uh, there's nothing that can beat nature, I must say. So I guess something will be missing. Okay, Lady of Nature, good morning and how are you? Yes, a very good morning you too, Priscilla and uh, also a lovely family on uh, Good Morning Uganda. Yes, we were starting to get addicted to the nature outside and uh, for sure it gives a different feel. There is uh, The wind is coming in, it feels good, the breeze is fine. Fresh air. So uh, yeah. I don't know, I'm advocating for that. I hope uh, um, my director is listening, uh, Mr. Kamoga. <laughs> <Sebo. laughs> we need to do a lot of uh, outdoor but uh, I guess we are also comfortable here. You know, home is the best. We've been here before, so it's we also so prefer home it here. Is the best, Chira. Would you agree in this regard? Fresh air. Think about it. Trees singing while you're, you know, starting. Of course, the nothing beats creation. Yeah, that's true. Nothing beats creation. However much man may want to perfect, what is God made is the best. Yeah, it's comfortable enough with the AC, of course, but it can't beat nature. And of course, if I were to advocate, still advocate for nature, uh, and that would be outdoor. But all is, we are always here to ensure that we give our viewers what is first class, reliable information to see them as they go through their business throughout the day as informed people because they made the best choice to start their day with us. All right, so speaking of reliable information, here at UBC, our commitment is to inspire Uganda every day, 24 hours, seven days a week. And in the last 24 hours, of course, there's stories that have come through that we want to keep you up to date. Just in case you missed it last night, we give you a review of what it is. And then later on, during the course of the day, of course, they will be building up to these stories. But starting off with the local stories, after which we will get into our international 
stories and a lot of stories coming through in terms of nature. Um, it, it's, a, it's about to take over the world, especially with the summit that was happening between the seven greatest powers. You know, We hope that every resolution out of it is going to help reduce on what we are seeing globally. But away from that, on to the local stories with Robert. And we will begin with Parliament honoring, that is, the former Archbishop of the Orthodox Church in Uganda, where Parliament honored the contributions of the late Archbishop of the Uganda Orthodox Church, Yona Ranga, who was buried on Monday, the 20th of September this year. The House chaired by the Speaker, Jacob Olanya, okayed a motion by government to pay tribute to the late spiritual leader and take appreciation of his dedicated contributions to Uganda and the world. The motion moved by the second Deputy Prime Minister, Rukia Nakadama, and seconded by the Leader of Opposition, Mathara Simpuga, seeked the August House to pay tribute to the fallen Archbishop of Uganda, its Orthodox Church, Yona Ranga. The late Yona Ranga died on the 5th of September this year in Athens, Greece, and was buried on Monday. Parliament uh, also spearheaded by the fight against poverty is one of the issues that were raised in appreciating the works he had done. A fighting illiteracy and hunger and improving health through creating various medical facilities across the country. Parliament recognized the late Archbishop as a person who did his best to expand the Orthodox faith in Uganda, leaving behind 105 Orthodox communities and 80 priests. Regarding security, residents living in the suburbs of Kampala have been given an ultimatum of two months to register with their local council leaders a remedy to curb crime in Kampala. The Resident City Commissioner, Hudu Hussein, made the remarks during a security awareness meeting on Machete welding men commonly known as Bijambia, criminal gangs spreading like wildfire across the country. The Office of the Resident City Commissioner Kampala has extended its sympathies to the homes who lost their loved ones at the hands of Machete Welding Men, aka Chijambia criminal gangs in Greater Massacre. Udu Hussein is convinced that the vigilancy of the ruling NRM on security matters, that the terror will be dealt with decisively. Unconfirmed reports indicate that Machete Welding Men have already infiltrated Kampala but the RCC says that the different security teams and leaders in Kampala are up to the task to deal with the extremists with Jambia men. Central Uganda is the most affected region so far. However, the RCC applauded Buganda Kingdom political leadership that joined hands with the central government in the fight against the elusive Machete welding men. We now turn to health, where the health monitoring unit of State House has arrested three people from Al Shad Labor Export Company over fraud. These have been forging vaccination cards, stamps, seals, among other items for travelers going abroad yet operating illegally. In July this year, Al Shad Labor Exporting Company was denied an operating license and was stopped from exporting labor abroad. This followed by travel ban on Uganda traveling to Dubai because COVID-19 had registered a number of forged vaccination cards which forced the health monitoring unit of State House to investigate the allegations made. Yesterday, the unit arrested three individuals, two from Al Shad Labor Exporting Company operating illegally and one person who has no company. These were found with duplicated transcripts passports, birth certificates, among other items. Road transport is one of the major aspects of development in the country. Cargo trucks moving in and out of the country use the infrastructure to return a huge contribution to the country's revenue resource base. However, many roads in the country remain wanting, though to a larger extent, efforts have been made to fix highway roads linking Uganda to regional streets. 
the Secretary General Local Government Association, Gertrude Rose Gamwera, who has urged government to increase the funds allocated for road maintenance and construction to have many road built. However, Gamwera was concerned that the central government has abandoned many roads to local governments to maintain, yet the trickle-down resource envelope for local governments is small. Now getting into our international stories, we will pick it up from the Joe Biden downplaying chances of the UK-US trade deal. Now Joe Biden has downplayed the chances of brokening a post-Brexit free trade deal with the UK and of course he came having held talks with Boris Johnson at the White House. Now Downing Street said the priority was still getting a deal with the US alone. However, BBC understands that UK ministers are now considering to joining an exiting North American trade pact instead of pursuing a separate deal. The UK and US leaders also discussed Afghanistan security and climate change during the 90-minute meeting. Now, speaking to reporters in the Oval Office before the meeting, Joe Biden said that the pair would discuss trade a little bit, adding, we are going to have to work that through. Now, still international stories, we see the Taliban coming out to ask to speak to the UN General Assembly that is happening in New York. The Taliban have asked to address the world leaders at the United Nations General Assembly this week in New York City. Now, the group of foreign ministers made the request in a letter on Monday, and the UN committee will rule on the request. The Taliban also nominated their Doha best spokesperson, Suhali Sushem, Afghanistan's US, UN, Afghanistan's UN ambassador. Now, the group which seized control of Afghanistan last month said that the envoy for the ousted government no longer represented the country. The request to participate in high-level debate is being considered by the, credit, by the Credential Committee, whose nine members include US, China, Russia, according to the UN spokesperson. However, they are unlikely to meet before the end of the General Assembly session next Monday. Crossing back to Africa, Sudan's failed coup where we see government blames pro-Bashir elements. Now, Sudan says that the forces of darkness linked to the ousted uh, President Bashir Omar were behind Tuesday's failed coup attempt. Now, remnants from the previous regime were intent of uh, aborting the civilian democratic transition, say the Prime Minister is Abdallah Handok in a separate message. He described it as an orchestrated coup attempt. Bashir also, who had been in power for three decades, was at top on two years ago. The current administration involving the military, civilian representatives and protest groups was the establishment as part of the power sharing agreement. Now, Rota News Agency also quoted Sudanese military as saying 21 officers and numbers of the police and soldiers had been detained in a connection with the failed patch and are continuing to search for the rest of the Well, coming in from Australia, the Malibu earthquake now tremors were felt across southeastern Australia. A 5.8 magnitude earthquake has rattled southern, East, southern Australia, damaging buildings in the city of Malibu. Now, the earthquake happened about 9.15 local time, that is 0.15 GMT on Wednesday, at Mansfield, not far from Victorian state capital. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said we have no reports of serious injuries and that is a very good news. The earthquake was also felt in the neighboring South, South Australia and New South Wales. It followed by the aftershocks of 4.0 and 3.1 magnitude. Now speaking from the US, Mr. Morrison noted earthquakes were uncommon in Australia and it can be very, very disturbing events. Now, Victoria State Emergency Services warned residents to be alert for possible aftershocks, especially those located in Victoria who are in danger for the aftershocks, saying that they should stay away from damaged buildings and other hazards, also avoiding driving except for emergencies, as the authorities say. Well, we see yet again uh, more coming uh, disasters from wildfires. We look at, uh, you know, the floodings 
And now we are looking at more earthquakes, especially for Australia. That is also one of the countries right now who are dealing with an increase up to 50. It can be, while we are dealing with the wet weather and flooding across Kampala, people are dealing with 50. That can be like double what we feel every day here. Wow. Well, speaking of flooding, yesterday I think there was a video that was going around social media over uh, the floods that took place around Ntinda stretch uh, Len, and uh, one border border actually had to was really taken away by the water and they kept telling the owner of the border border not to just uh, chase after it because the water levels were literally caught away uh, vehicles that were on the road mm -hmm. how much more a person and the the rapidness in the flow of that water was one that definitely won't spare a life so please be vigilant it's rainy times yes you, you we all have you know jobs that require us to work under such conditions but when the conditions are extreme put your life first and ensure that you don't get to be part of the statistics of people who die unnecessarily or when it's not yet your time that's not what we want for you we want long life for you speaking of long life um there's a remedy that uh, mr hallelujah has discovered <laughs> are we calling him that now <laughs> uh, mr hallelujah has arrived of course here i am with the drinks that are going to boost your immune system they're 100 percent natural but also they have been certified by the uganda national bureau of standards meaning they are safe for you to consume and also one good thing is what you can't find and have together at the same time has been contest condensed in these bottles and you're good to go but priscilla when you talk about people are being mindful it's also a time we call upon kcc and unra to ensure that these manholes are covered uh, last year we had a lady in kampala when there were heavy showers she couldn't notice she was just passing by and boom, because of the waters uh, she ended up uh, being taken by this so many of them are there people are constructing we don't understand endless construction and they leave some of these not covered so it becomes worse with the rain season so they should ensure that they cover they uh, enforce proper uh, maintenance of these manholes to avoid certain incidents such as that. All right, if you fell down yesterday, today you have a brand new opportunity to stand up yet again. So think about that as you start your day. But from us to you, we leave you with a song for the day to inspire you for the rest of the day. As we get into the 7 o'clock hour, we do have our poll question also that we want to engage your minds in with. And our whole question is what can be done to help pregnant teenagers to get integrated into school systems? Again, what can be done to help pregnant teenagers to get integrated into school system? Again, now you can be able to share with us uh, your true opinions and of course uh, sentiments uh, through our Twitter handle that is hashtag UBCGMU, our WhatsApp number 0709602592 2592 and of course through our Facebook page UBC TV Uganda and you can also leave your message SMS through the same numbers but also on our YouTube channel. Well now we'll get to our song of the day. I can't wait to listen to the lovely song and then when we come back myself Robert and Priscilla will be looking at our news video yet. Live from UBC Store.
TV was the best decision James has ever made. Finding a good place to watch football was never easy, but it was costly until James discovered something big. Now, you can finally enjoy the benefits of homegrown advantage with a decoder and one month of good TV value. For just 25,000 shillings, enjoy the world's biggest leagues and cap competitions. Go TV Uganda. Love it. My home, I smile when I think of you, Uganda. My home. My home, I dance when I look at you, Uganda. My home, oh my Uganda. I know, with you I'll always stay forever. I know, I know, because I feel that we belong together. My home, my home, under the sun so bright, under the moon at night, on my home. MTN, we look forward to starting another exciting journey together to grow our home, Uganda. Five, 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 five times the winning, yeah. Five times the happiness, yeah. Five times the luckiness, yeah. Five, four, five, oh, yeah. It's five, four, five. Five, four, five, five times the money. The shopping, yeah. Five times the prizes, yeah. Five for five, oh yeah. It's five for five. Five for five. five. Win! 100,000 Uganda shillings weekly in the 5 for 5 jackpot. Simply download the Center mobile app. Click Center on the go to open your account. Online, transact five times or more using Center mobile, Center visa, and Center agent to stand a chance to win. The more you transact, the higher your chances of winning. So, participate in the 5 for 5 jackpot and win millions in daily and weekly prizes. The 5 for 5 jackpot is brought to you by Centenary Bank, our bank. Centenary Bank is regulated by the Bank of Uganda. Customer deposits are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund. Echa COVID-19 chijakugwa only if we stay at home, observe physical distancing, wear masks properly, sanitize or wash our hands with soap and water regularly, or get vaccinated now. You know, you could just buy a new smartphone from anywhere in Uganda. Dial star 175 star 94 hash to activate their 100% double data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles for three months. <laughs> Better yet, you automatically receive free 1GB valid for 30 days. <laughs> you are hooked already, aren't you? Enjoy a 100% double data bonus from Airtel. Buy a smartphone from anywhere in Uganda and insert an Airtel SIM card. Dial star 175 star 94 hash to activate a 100% data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles. Valid for three months. Dial star 175 hash and select your preferred bundle to activate a 100% data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles. Valid for three months. Airtel, the smartphone network. When you talk about our motherland Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, you cannot fail to smile because of the smile that fills the faces of the citizens. Our nice good weather and nature that sustains us all, that enables us all to continue each in their own way because we are all different even according to each individual's work. But what joins us to become one person 
is the sweetness from the flavored drink hallelujah jinga tea drink and hallelujah tamarind drink the flavor that quenches your thirst while at the same time treating and healing your body because it is 100 percent natural enjoy the drink that has got the tamarind juice in it made by hallelujah reflexology healthy solutions and nutritional research center limited get yourself a bottle of hallelujah from all shops around Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda. Good morning to you once again. One minute past 7 a.m. It is Wednesday, 22nd September 2021. Welcome to Good Morning Uganda. If you have just logged on or tuned in at this particular hour, in this hour, we get to look at our newsreel, which we are yet to digest. But before that, we want to go through the poll question once again so that we can pick your minds about it. Felix. Well, what can be done to help pregnant teenagers to get integrated into school systems again? Now, what can be done to help pregnant teenagers to get integrated into school systems again? And uh, for you to be able to share with us what you think or your opinions are, go to our Twitter handle that is hashtag UBC GMU, and you can be able also to send a WhatsApp on 0709602592. But also on Facebook, you can leave a message and also on our YouTube channel. All right, that is definitely in relation to our conversation, our talking point this morning. We're talking about tackling the growing numbers of teenage pregnancies and double baths. Yesterday we looked at a story regarding double baths. Now you may be asking yourself, what is double bath? Double bath is when a teenager is pregnant, gives birth, but then by the age of 20, they have given birth again. That is what is referred to as double bath. Now, in reference to Uganda, which is predominantly a young population, with 53% of its population under the age of 18 years, according to the Uganda Bureau of Statistics, we get to see that teenage pregnancies have also increased over the years, most especially under the pandemic. Now, before the pandemic, uh, children or young girls between the age of 15 to 19, about 25% of those would actually get teenage pregnancies. However, due to the pandemic, that number has shot out of the roof and the staggering numbers need us to reawaken and shine light or cause conversation around teenage pregnancies and how we can find solutions to this dire problem that is cutting across the country, most especially in rural areas. Now, speaking of rural areas, we get to look at some of the statistics. In Kitugum, we do have so far in 2020, according to to the report that came out 3430 teenage pregnancies in Kavale alone 1014 teenage pregnancies and then you do have in Chibuku 2200 and Luengo district 130 young girls getting pregnant because of you know what is happening uh, COVID-19 has surely brought to light so many challenges for the young people who are currently not going to school which has been one of the solutions one of the remedies for how to manage children adolescents and pregnancies and also you know early childhood marriages and things like that but let's look at the tripartite influence of these particular things we have tradition we do have religion, but also we do have government's influence or interference for that matter. Uh, Felix, looking at those three, how have they actually made room for this staggering growth in numbers of teenage pregnancies? Well, uh, Priscilla, when you talk about uh, the fold, the, 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 the three approach fold that, that you did mention, it makes it quite uh, vividly true as a matter of threat towards how our teenagers are handled in terms of reproduction. Uh, maybe just also to touch base with something small before we come, I come to that, is why is it a concern that teenagers actually get pregnant? Because one would think that why is it a big deal? 
Now, being from a third world country, you must also take note that there are many things that teenagers are not able to do. And these will cut far across from biological uh, aspects to later on socioeconomic integration in terms of how much they can do to look after their children. And that's why it raises concern. Because one would say it's not a big deal. I mean, if, but the reason why we discuss teenage pregnancies as a problem, it is entirely because of, uh, by far, these two and of course many others. You look at a body of, say, of a 15 year old. This girl is simply a child in her own sense. And how much can she do? Talk about financially. If the older people are struggling financially, how about the young ones? And that now brings me to the question you asked, Priscilla, about uh, the three major challenges we have today, if you want to relate them to our teenage pregnancies. The first one, as you did mention, is tradition. Is tradition. What do we mean by, 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 by tradition? We mean uh, these are basically continued uh, social, cultural practices that have become or have till now become binding to particular societies and to particular cultures or customs or what you want to call later on our traditions that have been qualified by particular societies, entities. When you come to Uganda, you'll go to some places that I would not want to mention on air, where it is all right for teenagers to get married. And when you go to those communities, you are not surprised by the great number of teenage mothers between you and me and our viewers, you know some of these places. When you go to the issue of religion, again, it's the same bedfold that you will be surprised, you won't be surprised rather, to note that there are particular religions, and religions, I want to stress the word religion, are uh, practices, faith practices, that have also condoned the act of teenage girls getting into marital status or relationships. Now, that is another one. But also, thirdly, up till today, I feel that the institutions that should have taken this mantle on have shied and in terms of governance or government if you want to say however you will notice that by far this problem is looked at or left to the uh, civil society entities or what we call ngos than government entities for example the question would be if you want to take a trajectory of legalese how many cases are prosecuted annually for people who pregnant these girls because that then would be qualified as defilement because the law is there even when you go to the penal codes the procedure is given how to prosecute but how many cases if you want can be prosecuted annually for the girls who are pregnant what we do is we record the pregnancies but who takes care of going after the people who actually what would be fathers so are we doing the right thing to record the statistics of how many girls get pregnant uh, before the age of the, or they come of age? Or are we taking the right statistics of how many people are prosecuted for these kind of atrocities? Let me say this lastly about this matter, Priscilla. That in its own self, the failure of institutions like the police, like the judiciary, and probably other direct agencies in government to give accountability or in terms of enforcement against people who castigate this is the actual reason why these numbers are going on the rise you talked about covid earlier covid could have been a catalyst in one way or another mm. it is simply a catalyst but it found the problem the problem as you gave it it's totally right we must have the nerve to tackle the issue of traditions the issue of religion and this is painful by the way it is sad and also government. What is the government policy on teenage pregnancies? Okay, mm -hmm. as we look at the uh, government policy on teenage pregnancies, there's the uh, consequences that come with these teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. One of them is the high mortality rate of uh, during childbirth yeah. for the teenagers, which is also staggering. Uh, last year we had, out, out of the 3,000, we had 130 children, babies, uh, you know, being lost instantly at childbirth. Of course, there's also the post that also gets to have other babies losing their lives 
lives out of teenage pregnancies. Also, the constant or ever increasing abortion rate right now within the teenagers. If one finds a solution being abortion, they will encourage another, like, no, 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 there's a guy around blah, 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 and get abortion or because of the embarrassment. Let's look about the problems that are centered around teenage pregnancies vis a vis the future of these girls. Uh, first, uh, Priscilla, I also want to re echo uh, why we are discussing this. Uh, because, like Felix talked about culture, talked about religion, the people that are seeing this right because they have not been given enough information regarding the disadvantages of this. When we talk about teenage pregnancies, we are talking about a person conceiving when their body is not yet ready. That is why you see most of these girls will die, or a good number of these girls will die because even their pelvis, the uterus, there are so many complications. The body is still young and cannot safely uh, contain and also produce this baby. So as you're giving out your daughter for a cow, for a goat, you're sending this young girl to her grave. Second, we are looking at the future of these girls and those that they produce that many of these girls will go out of school, many when they reach a time to make the right decisions, they have something that can hold them from getting to that. Now look at the disadvantages uh, or the effects of this Priscilla. First and foremost, it has an economic impact on both the girl and the country and the community. That this young girl maybe should continue with school, be empowered, her future has been killed and she's either forced into a marriage or she's seen as an outcast in some communities. Uh, here in Uganda even had traditions that if you are maybe a child, a girl gives birth, uh, then uh, she will even, even if she died, she'll be buried at the end of the plot or land, whatever. So there is a way society will look at this young girl. There's a lot of psychological torture that comes to this young girl. Most of the times, uh, many in rural communities are married off. Let's look at the government. Government of Uganda spends so much money at the end of the day as far as ensuring that many of these girls, some develop lifetime complications, the likes of Fistula and all this, and here it has an economic impact on government. But also, I want to draw your attention to most of these teenage pregnancies vis-a-vis -vis HIV and AIDS. Uh, last week, I think, it was Uganda AIDS Commission, while uh, carrying out that is an induction for members of parliament on issues of AIDS, it was revealed that in, 2000, in 2020 alone, we had 55,000 babies born with HIV AIDS. And I might say that a big number of these could have been out of teenage pregnancies. Why? Because these girls are so young to determine Either it is protected or it is safe. So how many of these would give birth to babies that government is going to spend so much? Uh, you know, on ARVs, we spend about 100 million US dollars every year as a government in purchasing drugs for HIV AIDS. That is a lot of money. And remember, if you also understand that still the same report brings about 38,000 people that were infected with HIV AIDS. That means if these girls are lucky enough and they're among this population, they are now going to join and uh, that is getting uh, ARVs, that is also a cost, AIDS, main, all these facilities. That is also a burden on government. But also there is a saying that educate a, a girl, educate a nation. We don't know how many of these girls would be uh, occupying maybe inventors, would be doctors, would be innovators, would be key people that would drive you Uganda. Change agents. Yeah. The There'll be generation yeah. changers. Mm. You know? So these are some of the aspects, these are some of the effects that when we just talk about teenage pregnancy, we forget the aspect of HIV, how many of them mm -hmm. were able to make that. Most of this is an unsafe sex, unprotected sex. Mm. All right. Um, uh, while he has talked about how he has tied it into the future and the change for this country, let's look at it from the broader or long-term perspective. In terms of teenage pregnancies, we have noticed that once a teenager gets pregnant, it's very easy for them to have the double bath 
and then that is going to cause them to actually have more children probably out of wedlock and the next thing we're going to see a recurring cycle creating itself teenage pregnancy children out of wedlock then you have single parent families and then you have instability within communities and, and I know to the country the wedlock issue <laughs> what's wrong with the wedlock issue i should be asking you what's wrong with having kids out of wedlock and no it is because the structure states that a complete Which family structure the structure the of community god. that we live in and the god that the biblical, the for god and our country the structure yeah. requires that a child grows up in a wholesome picture yes. yeah okay so that cycle is being created just yeah. from teenage pregnancies well, well of course uh, uh priscilla related to uh, what uh, robert did say and you uh, also added i want to say that um, the apple cannot fall far from the tree which is the tree uh, the teenage mother Her you you you, output you, is you more or less the same yes and and and, and 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 um, we, we must be careful and and it is the most saddening bit is that how our societies have totally made it look like it's i mean you know mwana wa chitabu ya zadi oh kali ngabala bi you know just just the, the way we, we have not given the relevant attention to issue of teenage pregnancies let me tell you a, the problem with this we Chabu talks about the issue of uh, health, HIV. You talked about the issue of mortality mm -hmm. rate and what. But the bigger problem to this is 20 years from now, what kind of population are you going to have? The expected population. You get the point? Mm -hmm. If in one year you have over 1000 pre teenagers giving birth now this means that you're having over 1000 would be students would be graduates would be later on doctors lawyers mm. engineers teachers not able to achieve any of these mm. things and we are looking at it at, at uh, on an individual case but what are we doing and this is for me together as a country because it starts with the societies. We don't even have to call on two government at this point. The people in our societies, what is our role? And this is what we should be addressing. What is the role of societies in terms of dealing with teenage pregnancy? That's why I asked you, the hardest and the most painful aspect of teenage pregnancy is that we have the statistics of how many girls get pregnant as teenagers. We don't have the statistics of the ad ad adverse prosecution in terms of those who make them so society pre will condone the girl child society uh, and that will is put it put them in a box in a corner exactly but they will let free the culprits and led to and no one talks about men who mm. make pre teenage pregnancy uh teenagers pregnant who was who tell me from where they are discussed these people tell me that we have had prosecutions this month we are all they are giving there us in lockdown uh, and this is the most annoying in lockdown Havana, Pafuna, Nyembuto. Do people swallow pregnancies? Do they drink this? Mm. Who's talking about? I wanted the, the one, they, my, yeah, my, my friend in Yanga to come, in Yanga to come and tell me. Mm. In pre, in uh, COVID, we have arrested at least we are prosecuting over one thousand because one thousand pregnancies equal to one thousand mm. men. Really. All, all there are some okay. sharp men who yeah, are like a brother of mine I know, mm. who in you know, my neighbor in the east, mm -hmm. who can have. Uh, more than one. yes mm -hmm. he's a brother of mine somewhere mm -hmm. we work together on the tv but mm -hmm. the question is who's mm -hmm. discussing this bitter truth mm -hmm. and honestly and truly unless we agree mm -hmm. to break the wall of tradition the wall of religion the wall of lousy and bogus stereotype we are going to have this problem and i can tell you 20 years from now you will look for a doctor to work on you and you will not have one because as robert said what can a mother do 15 year old 13 year old what can she do to raise a child actually, Felix, can she take them to school actually this is a recurring problem no actually the it is just recurring that when a, mm. a teenage very few and i must say this very few products 
of teenage pregnancy. Make it in life. Make it in life. I know for Those are fact, people you find where pastors streets. are stealing money from them, breaking a curse, that there's something following you because your mother conceived at 15, you're also conceiving at 15. Yeah, so but it also is a curse. there's the but, social psychological but impact. But when actually... And of course society yeah. doesn't know what to do with it. That's yeah. true. And you know what hurts me so much is, Felix has talked about, we get the statistics, and nothing is being done. Very few people are prosecuted successfully because of culture, where they will say, ah, but when, but when, buzi, and religion. One time in my community, we went and arrested uh, some haji who was getting a young girl. And this man looked me straight in the face and asked me, this is a Uganda saying, I think Felix, my neighbor from the West, I know he knows these things very well. <laughs> he told me, you need to be specific, Robert, which things? <laughs> he told me, the saying, Mukuru. <laughs> and I found this very bogus, very stupid. Mukuru, what? what is that? He meant that as long as a girl has begun her menstrual cycle, she's ready to give birth. Now that's tradition. Yeah. That's what I was talking about, tradition. So I told him what Terry toke tori yengera mutu shiba. So if <laughs> there's another saying, as also. you conclude. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so okay, what happened? Yes, in conclusion. What happened? These are things we must ensure that yeah. we condemn together. And second, give these girls a second chance. I want to conclude with this, Priscilla. I went to school in Oliver with my best friend. She was called Prim. I won't mention the other name. You've already mentioned. I only there are many Prims in the world. There, yeah. there is one this girl, as I speak, mm. as I speak, she's now a medical doctor. She got pregnant in senior three, gave birth. The family brought her back into the education system. She's now a doctor, a medical doctor. So we, this is not a ticket to ending one's future. Mm -hmm. These girls remain brilliant. These girls just need support to ensure they achieve their dreams. Stop condemning them. But they still have uh, a bright future. If you don't mind me, please add to what Robert is saying. Uh, the, the condemning aspect we have done very well as a society. Mm. But over time, it has done nothing. The, that means condemning abusing what is not Shunning, the solution yeah, yeah. because that one society has done and it is very sad that it is the women who do this more it's sad and majorly these old women in communities instead of being the light in this sort of darkness and we have desisted far from the issue of society because long ago i remember as a grow, growing up as a young man in Ruraga, we were being condemned by anyone in society. Anyone. Even by the way, I remember we had the likes of Mama Nyombi. They, oh, they, they used to beat us they, because anything it was wrong. Community. Okay. It was communal. Mm, but today our communities community. don't care. Mm. I don't know why. Maybe mm. you people would know. Everyone looks at Chinabo's issues let's, as let's, their issues. Let's tackle the, the, the part of information out there. Mm. Um, teenage pregnancies, when I was growing up, there used to be straight talk magazine. Mm. And uh, that straight talk NGO did a good job in actually sensitizing people mm. uh, about, you know, teenagers and what their body development, sex education, sex mm. education and it, it definitely went a long mm. way in informing this mm. adolescent on what sh they should expect with their bodies and all these changes and how they can help uh, them, you know, just be able to control the changes going on in their lives. What are the remedies in terms of communication, in terms of sensitization? Yesterday we were talking about sensitization here regarding the vaccination program going on. The sensitization seems to have fallen back and uh, not being implemented, especially on grassroots levels of leadership in regards to such societal matters as teenage pregnancies. Mm. Well, like Felix said, I think we are running away from things we used to do even in our tradition. Priscilla, uh, I will speak about Buganda, which I know very well to some extent, that once a girl was born, the auntie, whom we call Senga, the Sengas, it was their responsibility to see that at every stage where this girl requires vital information, it is given to her. Today, of course, with the nature of works, what we call civility, uh, these aunties are no longer there. It would be a shame, not for the girl actually, for the same girl. You've not perfected your art. This girl has gotten pregnant before the right time. Today, uh, families shy to talk about issues regarding sex of their children. I want to call upon parents. You're busy running left center making ends meet, but there must be a time when you, the mother, 
when you the father when you the auntie you talk about you talk about reality to this child that what happens yes you are a grown up girl now this has happened this is a body change when this and this happens when like poles or when unlike poles come together attract there's a product that is going to come out so let's be open let's not shy away you know we've given parenting gaps to tv to social media uh, to whoever bothers if you don't give your child the right information there would be ankunda somewhere who would give this child i'm not referring yeah, to what? i'm not referring to you sorry to, i'm just giving an example ankunda somewhere i don't want to mark you don't say ankunda somewhere now, there are so many there are so many <laughs> so who would give your child information that would rail just to exploit this young girl if this young girl has been empowered first with the family then you go to community then also we go to the laws what is happening priscilla is uh people are committing these offenses and walking away deterrent that is one thing okay. that we need unfortunately you refer to family but if we are to assess family that f a family structure is already broken mm. in terms of what we have today there's mm. more single parenthood out mm. there than there is a full structure of a family mm. the mother talk to your daughter as felix had mentioned that then you rip this exactly but then so you hey, don't have a let's choice look at it from the aspect of yes uh, mm. this young girl has gotten pregnant in her mm. teenage years but that doesn't mean that all hope has been lost yes. how then can we as society how then can we as family and government as inspire this young girl to aspire yet again to desire to go back to school finish education get something to do and live a life worthy all that is deserving of them away from the tag of teenage mother well um you see picking a, picking yourself up is not anyone's responsibility and this one i want to emphasize before you my dear colleagues um the responsibility for my life is 99% with me and i mean that the responsibility of making the right decisions is entirely with you. As a parent, I'm talking about the fact the decisions you make in terms of how you raise your child. Robert talked about social media. Again, the decisions you make on how you want to raise your child. You cannot blame the government. Don't blame the student. It's entirely about you. Before you talk about the teenage pregnancies and mothers, where are the parents? What is the role of a parent in terms of protecting their little ones? Both are drunk. My daughter is a little one even when she's 20 years old. Yes. It's my responsibility as a father, even there be a mother, whether single mother, whether double mother, whatever. Quarter mother. Quarter, call it whatever, or half. It is your responsibility. And this I have learned as a matter of fact. That is the starting point, Priscilla, for me. Secondly, you as a child, what is your responsibility as a child? People have been talking about COVID. And for me, it just gets disturbing me. Because it, below it what is the relationship? You see, these are people that uh, really their sense of judgment, their constant levels, no, certain things. This, when, this, you um, say, when you say that COVID is a but COVID of COVID of it's it's a bit tricky. The fact that people are home, it doesn't relate, it doesn't automatically result in it makes them more right. vulnerable. No. Vulnerability, vulnerability is, yes. is different. That's another discussion. Yeah. Okay. As as you round What I want to say mm. that people in this country mm. want to shy away from responsibility. Mm. How can a mother for example, we all, for example, all we have been, all of us have been in lockdown. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you say that kids have been getting pregnancy in lockdown when the father is home and the mother is home? Unless you're saying it is the father's pregnancy, because we have all been home. Mm -hmm. So uh, this whole thing of trying to shift blame as parents. For me, I think today I want to emphasize the point of parental responsibility mm -hmm. in terms of raising our children. Mm -hmm these things you think you don't want to do now you're simply fast to forwarding problems for yourself mm -hmm. and it will come back to you for me it's so painful that parents today 
have thrown away their duties as parents. They're hiding in the shadows of working, economy, whatever, whatever. The economy today is better than it was 30 years ago. That's a matter of fact. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your input. This all goes back to gender-based treatment in society, which now leading, is leading to gender-based violence. How about we go back to the drawing map and actually first realize that it takes two to tango, you know, in raising this girl child. It takes two to tango in raising a child, by the way, be it a girl or a boy, because as it has rightly been put, that the girl doesn't get herself pregnant. There's a boy somewhere that is getting her pregnant, but he's let a loose and no one is condemning the boy child so how about we actually sit down as society and do as much emph emphasizing on education to the boy child as much as we are doing to the girl child let's do as much condemning by the way to the boy child as we're doing to the girl child Priscilla, let's have accessibility please, uh, to let justice me just, if please allow me just say this and this is just a by the way in buganda culture when a child starts to give birth the parents stop you, I don't know if you know of that. Stop giving birth? Yes, they cannot give birth when any of their children is give, they started giving birth. So, for some of you who still want to give birth also, parents, you must protect your dreams. You know that? Okay. I didn't know that. That's <laughs> yeah, now you know. It's, 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 it's <laughs> traditionally. Okay. By well, the right, time we um, end that is, show. This, no, 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 no. This <laughs> is a long conversation. <laughs> we are going to be back with our newspapers. This conversation won't end. But as we say, let's have that access to justice for these uh, teenagers that are getting pregnant, other teenagers that are impregnating, but also if, if, whether teenager or adult that is causing the pregnancies to happen in these different communities. Community leadership. Let's take up the role. The president has allowed so many numbers, percentages of women in leadership. Dear woman in leadership, what are you doing Vice with President, your Prime leadership Minister. position? Mrs. Vice President, what are you doing with your leadership Mrs. position? We do have, um, you know, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Robin Anabad, uh, you know, Prime Minister, what are you Fight doing with the your same position? energy for corruption, we same need energy. it here. Let's mm. save this girl child, because Honestly, when you save the girl child, yeah, you're yeah. saving Uganda. The Uganda of tomorrow starts today with these numbers. If you're having a young preparation uh, population, then it's going to translate into something else in the near future. Millennium Good morning, again, and let's continue. Goals. Live from Now Avenue in UBC Studios. This is Good Morning Uganda. You know, you could just buy a new smartphone from anywhere in Uganda. Dial star 175 star 94 hash to activate their 100% double data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles for three months. <laughs> Better yet, you automatically receive free 1GB valid for 30 days. <laughs> you are hooked already, aren't you? Enjoy a 100% double data bonus from Airtel. Buy a smartphone from anywhere in Uganda and insert an Airtel SIM card. Dial star 175 star 94 hash to activate a 100% data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles. Valid for three months. Dial star 175 hash and select your preferred bundle to activate a 100% data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles. Valid for three months. Airtel, the smartphone network. Five, 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 five times the winning, yeah. Five times the happiness, yeah. Five times the luckiness, yeah. Five for five, oh yeah. It's five for five. Five, 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 five times the money, yeah. Five times the shopping, yeah. Five times the prizes, yeah. Five for five, oh yeah. It's five for five. Five for five. five. Win! 100,000 Uganda shillings weekly in the 5 for 5 jackpot. Simply download the Sente mobile app. Click Sente on the go to open your account. Online, transact 5 times or more using Sente mobile, Sente visa and Sente agent to stand a chance to win. The more you transact, the higher your chances of winning. So, participate in the 5 for 5 jackpot and win millions in daily and weekly prizes. The 5 for 5 jackpot is brought to you by Centenary Bank, our bank. 
Centenary Bank is regulated by the Bank of Uganda. Customer deposits are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund. <music>Thank you for keeping it with us on UBC TV. This is Good Morning Uganda. Every weekday, make it a date so that you don't miss uh, being updated with what is happening or the humor. And of course, we set the pace of the day and the agenda. It is now time we look at some of the stories in the dailies. I have the new vision and my colleagues has both the Daily Nation and the Daily Monitor. Well, Museveni expected to ease restrictions, that is COVID-19 updates, Lockdown on churches, universities could be relaxed as we await the president's address. Still, the new vision brings you that is Francis Onebe charged with wife's murder. This has been ongoing. Uh, the lady who has full her body phone in the septic tank, the barrier took place at the marital home. Then also uh, in fashion, showcase of the timeless Gomesi. That is Uganda's traditional wear for the ladies. Medical bills, MPs to bear holding of bodies. They are planning to ban that. Well, if someone has not been able to meet uh, that is uh, the bills, then they shouldn't hold, uh, keep the body until payment. Uh, from Parliament, Minister Amongi announces NSSF bill roadmap. Mm, as people crave for midterm benefits, then CMI arrests eight suspected. Hack. This is a. Uh, Hackers, uh, they have been arrested. And also the new vision, we look at Chambo graduation. That was yesterday, we are over 9,000, the biggest ever at the university graduation in terms of numbers. And still we look at, um, that is uh, the education bit of it. Uh, there is biology, chemistry for senior three and geography, plus senior two English uh, there for you. So uh, students there, you can ensure there is continuity by getting yourself a copy of this. Now in the daily monitor, we're seven to give date for school reopening. The national address, Ugandan expects president to pronounce himself on school reopening, curfew places of worship, bars among others as he addresses the nation on COVID-19. Now on every charge with murder of wife Asio, Iso, rather, and uh, train more scientists, president tells Chambogo Nawina, losers in the reworked NSSF bill, but also in homes, building houses for the future, and of course, they also give you COVID-19, where we see vaccination and the categories of how far we have hit. The targets, the teachers, at least fully jabbed, 90,000 and targeted is 550. Health workers, 530, have been fully jabbed. Security, 448,000. Elderly, 125. At least the target is 3 million. Now, inside the papers, Uganda will miss Rwanda's wise counsel. Museveni says, 
and world faces decisive decade, says Biden. But also from the archives, Museveni um, receives a waved basket as gift during the Women's Day celebration at Massacre Liberation Grounds on March 8, 1997. Now today in history, uh, King Chua II of Buganda commissioned cap captain there. That was in September 22, 1914. And also in history, Shaka Zulu is assassinated in September 22nd, that is the 1828th. Back to the new vision, uh, 50 year, 59 years of independence. They give you a picture of Wandegaya Market. Oh, these were the shops in Wandegaya that was Kampala in 1961. And what is now there, the new Wandegaya Market building, uh, giving you a view of that is the Southern Wing. Uh, did you know that Molago Hospital was opened as part of the independence celebrations that was in 1962? And uh, back to the COVID-19 tracker, uh, new confirmed cases, 128 positivity rate, 4.9 percent. Looking at death so far, one person succumbed to COVID-19. Total death, uh, with standard 3,130 persons that have succumbed to COVID-19 in Uganda. Facts or myth? Do COVID-19 vaccines contain eggs and metals? Well, the expert answers more on that. Now in sports, uh, Makonzi delivers class. Well, we did see Makonzi two uh, bagged two goals to kickstart the Robertinho era as Vipers coach to book a place in Sunday's finale. And Timbe to prioritize team bonding ahead of Al Masi. Of course, Chemtai rules knee problem. Now Peru's Chemtai season might earlier than uh, maybe may expire earlier than expected. Ateta handed chance to solve Arsenal problem, but also. A wood ball ready for international return after two years of uh, being down and Victoria Powell seek to forge ahead. In the new vision sport, we have Vipers Storm Uganda Cup Finals. That is uh, the Vipers team there. Then Makonzi shot down police during last evening's Uganda Cup semifinals at Injeru. That is the new vision sports. Still looking at the sports in the new vision, uh, Olympic Chem Tai there has had a promotion more regarding that and mark to host varsity rugby games uh, they'll host them there and uh, still more uh, they give you regarding uh, sports and women in the world of sports but remember these and more rubens always here to give you all the updates in the world of sports and those catchy stories now crossing over to daily nation now Carone spills beans on adi cartel there and of course uh, we see dp tell dp ruto tells politicians to focus on more important issues and how Ryla is turning BBI fall against Ruto. Of course also mother's painful farewell message to dead children. That's a sad one there. And will parliament end fuel pain in Kenya? Don't forget to get yourself copies if you want to get more of what's happening in the papers. But as of now we would want to know how you people will be finding your way to the beautiful heart of Kampala with Priscilla. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, we get to have a look at the traffic and what it's looking like this morning. Slightly around uh, Kaleri Market, where you would be picking it up from Cheva and Don Sova, and that roundabout uh, that does interface with the Kampala Northern Highway, uh, which is particularly this one. You get to see that Kaleri around the market and onto Kaleri Road, you have a lot of traffic. Surprisingly, traffic heading to the roundabout is more than the traffic that is coming from the roundabout. There are those back routes that come through Chevando Ring Road and do bring connection to the Kaleri Road and bring connection through uh, different parts of the other side. Possibly some of these routes come through Kamocha onto uh, some of these various routes that can connect you to the Kaleri Road. But as of this morning, only traffic around the market area, the rest of the area, towards the roundabout, the Kaleri Roundabout, is clear pretty much on Bombo Road we get to see how the traffic is flowing in Bombo Road and this morning it looks uh, better than usual surprisingly uh, it's usually a trade route lots of trucks and uh, traffic jam except of course for the sharp corner here that has growing potholes uh, now that it's even a rainy season you must be more careful driving through this particular stretch of Bombo Road because of those potholes you may end up having a mechanical disadvantage to your car than the advantage so during rainy times please uh, slow down on this particular area 
Which brings us to the Boise uh, roundabout, which is having a lot of red zones, especially st uh, stretching from Boise. You get to also do have the fact that there's so many diversionary routes that have been created around the roundabouts because they're reconstructing the northern bypass, uh, bypass in some areas. You get to have those alternative routes having a lot of traffic jam around that particular roundabout. And then even from Total, heading into Makere to Konyi, you get to see that there's a lot of jam building up away into Makere. You get to see a lot of jam being fed into and out of the Boise roundabout onto Bombo Road, but also you get to see that people that are coming in from the other outskirts of Kampala, we're talking about Wusega, Gurenga, people that are coming in from Bulova, will alternatively use the bypass uh, to ensure that they avoid the traffic jam that's usually either around Wusega around about uh, the Natete traffic lights this morning, even there, but Shibuye will have a lot of jams. So they would rather opt for using the northern bypass to be able to get to the other parts of town. Now, obviously, this is going to be affected by the red zones that you are seeing there. And Nawari is also having red zones being picked up on either side of the area code. And that shows you that there's a lot of traffic that you should be expecting on that particular road. Uh, but a sneak peek into Makere and what it looks like uh, this morning, you get to see that there's not so much of uh, major traffic routes that you would be expecting um, around Makere Business Institute. There's not so much on uh, other routes that bring, bring in traffic into Makere or out of Makere. There's not so much traffic. So the rest of the route is uh, clear. You do have Makere de Kabure Road that is also not having as much jam this morning obviously the expectation is that if the university was fully functional uh, that would change the stance of how traffic moves especially in the Kavule area but there's none that you should be expecting away from that we also get to look at another area that will be expected to have a lot of jam which is the Vinaisa road the roundabout which is the old Mulago roundabout is expected to have slow close to standstill traffic jam and that red straight is going all the way to the Mulago round about so if that was your route this morning you might want to find an alternative route or expect to spend about 40 minutes in that particular area so that should be your consideration even the Mulago roundabout uh, for traffic going to Kira Road uh, there's a lot also orange zones for traffic heading into Wandegar so those should be your considerations when you're making your route plan this morning make sure that uh, you are aware of those traffic flows and choose your route paths wisely on to Molen Kenyana with weather nature and climate that there are a lot of people coming into the city but I can tell you in terms of whether we are having mostly in terms of sunny and cloudy conditions for this morning so it is still clear to get into town although that will be changing we will be taking a look at our forecast that but that will be later for now we want uh, to look at what is trending worldwide in terms of weather we woke up to uh, life at 50 degrees centigrade. Now there is uh, a record-breaking number coming in from Australia where they have already hit 50 degrees. Now 50 degrees is actually not normal. It is way beyond normal of what is happening across most areas. Now Australia has had mostly a maximum temperatures going up to 30s but we haven't uh, had reports of 50 which they are now hitting uh, for the very first time and that is also adding to a lot of uh, countries that are looking at record-breaking temperatures for this year and uh, looking at uh, what we've had when you look at uh, that uh, colors on the map in Australia that extreme red hitting 45 now that is uh, uh, something that has been recorded in the past in terms of how the weather has been like across that area and uh, you can see there is nothing actually in the blue or yellow these guys have been dealing with uh, the upper 40s that is hot enough but now if they are crossing over to the 50s we can only imagine which kind of life that is going to look like it's going to be very hot and this is the kind of weather that actually does also um, kind of um, bring about the heat waves also bring about a possibility of wildfires because this takes away a lot of moisture from the atmosphere and what can only happen after that is looking at what we're calling extreme weather events 
But uh, also to put into perspective uh, what is happening over there, something that is out of the ordinary and already this has been connected to climate change. What is happening is that we have taken away uh, much of what could be helping cool down our heat. And uh, when we talk about global warming, we look at areas like this that are already hitting the 50s. How is this going to look like? And it's not only Australia. We have seen uh, also Egypt uh, hitting high numbers. We have had uh, Dubai in the 40s. We have Europe also uh, recently was dealing with heat waves. So we are looking at most of the areas raising into high numbers. But also uh, that adds to the story that we have coming in from Sydney, they did have uh, also record 50 and life has not been okay over there. That is still Southern Australia. But away from that, we also see a report that came in from a regional climate prediction center talking about food insecurity that is across Eastern African region. Now, this report is talking about how uh, Relatively, we do have food insecurity, but it has been at least connected to a lot of reasons. Now, weather patterns are just one of those that have been attributed to this report on how food insecurity is a likelihood for our region. Now, this is coming in from IGAD, also looking at uh, how can we curb this effect. But we want to go ahead and take a look at our weather forecast uh, for uh, this week, the coming week, and that will go up to the 28th of September. Looking at Uganda, we do have more areas in the green across Mount Elgon Highlands. We do have West Nile, Midwestern Uganda still in the green. Now those areas are the ones likely to have wet weather conditions, but that will be more than the rest of the country. Then we have uh, Karamoja region and parts of northern Uganda that are expected to have a little bit of reduced rains. Now that is in terms of uh, rainfall, we also look at what is likely to happen in terms of temperatures. We're seeing mostly above 20s across the country where there is that uh, light yellow between 20 to 24. That is uh, most areas expected to be around that. But West Nile already hitting in the upper 20s. That is also for Gulu, that is central northern Uganda, Padel, Kitugum, that area can also expect to be in upper 20s again. But we are seeing quite cold weather, quite cold weather for southwestern Uganda, Kavale Highlands. Now that area usually has below, uh, within the lower 20s, that is 20 to 25. But uh, the forecast is indicating we're also likely to be within at least 20, below 20, 19 to 20. And uh, also I can see uh, Midwestern parts of Midwestern across the Renzori region around uh, Toroko, Fort Porto, that area can also expect cold weather for the coming week. And that is up to the 28th of this month. Now looking at the general forecast in terms of total rainy conditions, we do have the areas that are in the orange colors. That is where we have also the Lake Victoria Basin, by the way, where we have Kampala, Entebbe, Wakiso, Tororo, that area is also in the orange sector. That means we will have reduced wet weather conditions compared to what is going to be experienced across the Mount Elgon Highlands, parts of Central, Lake Choga Basin, area around Lake Choga still expected to have more rains. That area has already been having more rains uh, compared to the rest of the country, West Nile, still forecasted to have more wet weather conditions now that is one to look out for well uh, that is uh, also showing the report that we're talking about in terms of food insecurity and uh, for the last for this decade we have looked at uh, more numbers increasing and uh, the report is saying that close to four, four million people are uh, expected to be facing uh, food insecurity issues across the region now more of the hotspots is across ethiopia also looking at uganda same as kenya also that area has been mostly attributed to uh, conflicts we do have uh, economic shocks especially now that we have been dealing with covid 19 that also contributes to the food insecurity across across the country then we look at the weather extremes and uh, mostly also the drought we've had drought cases especially uh, across the region uh, also for south sudan and parts of northern uganda also where we've had mostly drought cases still there are a lot of reasons that are attributed to this kind of uh, um, insecurity 
but uh, we can only deal especially when we talk about the weather extremes these are out of our control so what we can do is actually find a way to adapt to these uh, changing situations across the country well talking about that we need to take a look at uh, weather forecast for the, this morning looking at how the weather is going to be like for different areas within the country now it looks like we've started off with mostly a mix of clouds and sunshine across the country but we do also have rains that continue to develop across most areas especially the west nile do expect more wet weather conditions to come your way also we do have midwestern uganda that area across masindi will be having rains as the day progresses you can look out for those but also starting off with a, a chilly morning especially for the southern sector that takes in the lake victoria basin parts of uh, the western parts of lake victoria basin that is where we have uh, masaka that is where we have kalisi so that area is also starting off with chilly weather and extending to the kabale highlands uh, usually the Kabale Island starts off with uh, mostly reduced visibility and uh, that is attributed to the moisture within uh, that area being influenced by the mountains, the hilly side. But still, they always start off with cold weather and in the night it's worse because it starts from at least 14 then rises like uh, in the night by 3 temperatures are already at 14. That can feel cold if you're not a resident of that area. But we do expect to start off the day at least within uh, the um, uh, higher 19 or 18. But going into the day, we'll see temperatures warming up to also the lower 20s. It could reach 23. Now looking at also what we're seeing in terms of especially northern Uganda, we'll uh, look at the forecast for central northern Uganda, that is across Gulu, uh, Kitgum, as well as Padel coming in this morning. We look at uh, mostly sunny intervals. Those will be developing into rainy conditions later in the day. We do have the northern Choga, that is Lira, Apak. We have Otuke, Dokoro, also expected to start off with intervals of sunny and cloudy conditions, but starting off with a warm 26 degrees. Now more from the Karamoja region, still expected to have sunny intervals and uh, also starting off with a warm morning. Now Elgon Highland, that is Mbale, that area is already starting to develop clouds as we speak. That area is expected to have isolated showers starting off at 23. Then we also have West Nile, Nebi, Arua also forecasted to have thunder showers. Now also for the Kigezi Highlands starting off with rain, South Renzori, that is Kasese, Buera. That area is also expected to have rains and those will continue into the afternoon. Northern Renzori where we have Kabarole, Chenjojo, that is also uh, likely to start off with isolated thunder showers but temperatures will start off at 24. Now here in Kampala, it seems like we have cloudy conditions forecasted, but also we do expect rains as the day progresses and we are starting off with a 24 degrees Celsius. Well, I will leave you at that. I do have Priscilla with our comments, especially on the um, poll question that we had this morning. But later, we'll also be joined by Robert on Good Morning Uganda Agenda. And also we have Ruben standby to give you sports updates. Priscilla, take it away. Thank you so much, Molen. Just to sample a few of your thoughts in regards to our poll question this morning. Good morning, Uganda. Um, this should be integrated into technical schools such that they acquire skills for production. Since there is a responsibility ahead of them and other school system, and the school system is longer, and that is St. Peter from Rueiro. Thank you so much for your thoughts there. Uh, we do have another message here. We are having that conversation dialogue regarding teenage pregnancies and how they're actually being affected in the near future good morning felix priscilla robert and Molen. i think the main reason why these teenagers shy away from coming back to schools is stigma whereby in schools both teachers and students look at them as sinners fellow students even laugh at them but if they give them positive message like being pregnant at a teenage stage doesn't mean life is no more Education is another chance for you to make your life better. Such encouraging messages make such students to find solace in the schools than running away. Cricket, Derek, that is a very, very good submission that you give there. And then we also do have another submission in that very same regard. Thank you very much, UBC crew, for being with us. May God bless you people. My name is Ed.
Etau, Alfred Soroti City. To me, these teenagers must be allowed to into schools because it was not going to be like that for sure if it was not COVID-19. Those who can sit exams must be allowed to sit for sure. Then others who cannot make it may cause may, may because of labor pain can do it next time. And life moves on until they are all entered into the system. Good day, my icons. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, there's one who has referred to these gentlemen as Koja. Good morning, Uganda. Thank you, Koja Felix. Thank you, Koja Robert, for the insight. But I think the leadership ought to learn acceptance. This is something they've failed to deal with. So I'd rather they opened up at least for students at Senior 4 and those above. That way, it is just at university be, uh, because rather than deny and avoid addressing it, they should incorporate them into our system. Thank you for the show, Isaac. Thank you so much, Isaac. Okay. Um, uh, good morning, Uganda. I'm um, Okello Franco Joseph. According to me, the problem is the parents due to the little time they have for their children and the way they handle issues in the family matters in the growth of their children. Uh, very much agreed. And finally, uh, GMU, I think this shouldn't be abused because the thing has already happened and blamed the government is blaming the government is not the way. Parents should look at their teens and something they are not at home if not abused and only encouraged uh, something to do with labor but uh, we get the point i think sadiq mutabazi thank you so much for your submission uh, we'll look into it better so that we give it a better angle but at the end of the day of course uh, there was a highlight in the impact of tradition religion and also government in shaping the environment that has caused increased numbers in teenage pregnancies uh, we hope that there will be a solution later than that any time the best time to talk about it is now so that we change the shape of Uganda and the future of Uganda. Good morning, Uganda does continue with the agenda. Phil, uh, Robert uh, Chirabo is coming through to talk about the NSSF bill, what the future is like, what needs to be amended, how can the president get to sign it, and all these edits that have to be done around the bill before it is actually passed. Good morning. This is Good Morning Uganda. Getting Go TV was the best decision James has ever made. Finding a good place to watch football was never easy, but it was costly until James discovered something big. Now he can finally enjoy the benefits of homegrown advantage with a decoder and one month of Good TV value. For just 25,000 shillings, enjoy the world's biggest leagues and cap competitions. Go TV Uganda. Love it. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field couldn't be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Yeah. Ah. My radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communications sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Echa COVID-19 chijakugwa only if we stay at home, observe physical distancing, wear masks properly, sanitize or wash our hands with soap and water regularly, or get vaccinated now. This is Good Morning Uganda.
Once again, thank you so much for keeping it on UBC TV. Well, inspire Uganda. Welcome back from weather and nature. And of course, we cannot uh, to thank you so much uh, for sending in those messages, uh, your comments regarding this show. We appreciate every message that comes in, whether red or not. We appreciate and please keep it coming on. Well, uh, today we are going to be looking at another issue of national concern. And this is more uh, regarding the savers of people with the National Social Security Fund. Just to take you back, it was the 10th Parliament. It was the end of the 10th Parliament where we saw them pass. That is the bill on NSSF midterm benefits. This wasn't very easy. Of course, there was some bit of pressure, this and that later. Uh, the president invited stakeholders, most of workers representatives, to give him an insight of this bill. And they came to a conclusion of a number of issues. However, the bill had to come back to parliament because of a few changes for ratification of what was changed. Just a key point was if you've served for 10 years and you're 45 years old, then you can get 20% of your savings. Now, what was changed, the and, there was or. So making it that if you've served for 10 years, you're 45 years or not, you can still get your 20% benefits. There are some of the things that the bill had to return to parliament and were to be ratified and see the way forward. Of course, the president said the minister would come up with a statutory instrument guiding on how these monies would be given to those that qualify among the 1.2 the 1 million savers that save with the National Social Security Fund, a fund that is estimated to be around uh, 15 trillion Uganda shillings. And when we look at uh, the people who would qualify and get this money, that would mean about 850 billion would be taken from the fund. Now with me in studios to discuss this, I have, that is uh, the chairman general of the national organization of trade unions and also the second vice president of the horn of africa trade union federation that brings together eight countries that is mr uh asher wilson already you're most welcome to our studios oh thank you my brother and uh i just want to greet the our the viewers out there and i want to thank you bc for giving workers this time to air our views and also put workers' issues at that level. Mm. I, I really want to appreciate that. Mm. Uh, Mr. Well, if it's okay, maybe you can excuse yourself of the mask okay. for uh, better uh, sound output okay. on that. Well, uh, when we talk about this bill, now we are seeing there is a whole debate in Parliament, which seems there's pooling here and there to ensure either we workers register success that's saving with NSSF or we don't have a breakthrough. Uh, first of all, let our viewers, let the savers understand why are we seeing what may be seeming was a done deal again back to table? I, I think, you know me, I consult a lot. Mm. And when there's a such issue, I try to find out what is the problem. One of the things is that uh, this, town, this time round, there's a political will on this bill. And that is the first thing. You remember we had several meetings with His Excellency, the President of Uganda, yeah. with the leaders of workers, Minister of Finance, Minister of Labor, and other stakeholders. And we agreed, because this bill, after passing through Parliament, it had issues, especially there was worry that uh, the bill may cause the fund some inch in case some money was taken away and given to the workers. Now, we the leaders came out with the facts and figures to explain to the president and uh, we all agreed this bill on 4th uh, of uh, last month, that is August in the state house we had an agreement that this bill can now go on and the, the president said okay you people now we have now seen whatever happens this will not collapse this government let's go ahead and uh, process this bill 
he directed the Antonio Geno to go and make those changes so that it is taken back to parliament for ratification. For us, after that, we were very, very comfortable. We thought uh, things would move without any problem. But later on, we had that bang from the speaker. Says all the bills that was passed in 10th parliament, there's issues with it. So we, we were all taken aback, shocked and so on. So we immediately, we, the, with the, our members of parliament, workers members of parliament, we had to have a meeting, have a meeting, we agreed on how to approach this issue. And one of them was to consult the speaker and also consult the president if we fail. But uh, the good news is on, uh, on Monday, that was the first assignment. Mm -hmm. We went to speaker's office. We had a very fruitful meeting with him. He explained to us, for him, his biggest problem, he wants things to go through the proper channel, proper law, so that anybody in future cannot challenge what? What, the, was what, what has been the rules of procedure, the rules of procedure and mm -hmm. so on. So in, in my own understanding, I, I found him very, very, very uh, okay because he was trying to put his house to order, which is right. But it was affecting us and the, the whole thing was also had taken another direction. It has taken political angle. Some people wanted the political capital out of it. They were also trying their level based to, to use this to. So what we did was to now, what do we do? I asked the speaker, what do we do? With our, we went with our members of parliament representing workers. Now in the process, we agreed that yes, this bill must be fast tracked and we must. Because this bill, first of all, it is just facilitating to transform the lives of workers in this country. You, you know, this act was... Maybe let's first get you, when you talk about this bill being fast-tracked, how are you looking at this at parliamentary level? Because uh, uh, when you look at the, pros the speaker, what he put on table previously, yes. uh, saying that uh, when you look at the laws that govern how we do business, uh, if this was of the 10th parliament, and... Uh, procedurally, uh, certain things weren't handled the way they should have been, then it may not have the fate of the 11th parliament. It, it was right in a way that for him, he was looking at it lawfully. Uh -huh. And I think he was also wondering why the bills are delaying. Uh -huh. You know, you pass a bill, this bill was passed in, a, in a, around the last, the, the, the other year before here. Yeah. election. Now, imagine after that it went to the president, then he, there was that problem of consultation and so on. I, I don't want to discuss about other, because mm -hmm. other bills are also there, but this one, this particular bill, it was very, very sensitive in a way that it was, there was a dialogue at that highest level. Mm. Now, <laughs> you cannot just wash away that bill and say, we put it aside or we start afresh. Mm. Because that creates a lot of anxiety among the, the workforce. Mm. And already, the, 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 the whole issue had become so, so bad that if we, had, if we are not handling it properly, mm. it can explode. Mm -hmm. So we took the leadership and said, no, we must discuss with these leaders. Mm. Now, I'm, I'm happy now that the, the minister, who is actually the owner of the bill, that is the government, because this bill is not a private member's bill. It's a government bill. So the government has owners to bring it back to what? To parliament. So the speaker was also wondering why this bill has delayed and the, the time has elapsed. It's like now, uh, let us say, supposing it was uh, Chagulani who took over, you think it would have signed that bill? So, 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 so there is that, there is a change of government. Mm -hmm. Now that change of government, everything must follow the what? The procedure. Mm -hmm. Now this is where the speaker, the government, late parliament and government 
we are not coordinating properly. Okay. So my role as the workers leader is to identify the problem mm. and sort it out. How are you uh, planning to sort out this problem? No, we, so have, ad we, have, ad we have identified the problem. Mm. There was uncoordinated mm. movement by, by parliament and uncoordinated movement by government. Mm. Now we are telling government and parliament, mm. sort out yourself. Mm. For us, what we want is to see the what? The, the bill progressing. Mm. And that is the lie. Mm. I've also told the members of parliament, mm. representing us, because they are our voters mm. and we are their bosses, Mm -hmm. We are directing them. Mm -hmm. We want that bill fast tracked. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have been uh, romancing. Mm -hmm. We have been dialoguing. But where it has reached, we now demand. Uh, during your meeting, I think that was on the 4th of uh, last month, uh, it was very clear that there were proposals that you had put on table and all that we need was a strategic instrument on how this is going to be rolled out. That was... A person who has served for 10 years, yes, clocked 45 years, exactly, would be eligible to get uh, that is a uh, 20 percent of their savings, yes. But now, here, there is and or explain this. This is another technicality that I had some members of parliament point out that you see, by the time the bill left parliament, it was if you've served for 10 years and you're 48 years, you clock 48 years, you can get your. Uh, that is a 20 percent but the whereas then put an or or r which now makes it totally something different throw more light on this no the original bill mm. from the in inception mm. when we started it because we we this bill went through all the stakeholders mm. and we agreed we said no this is a a fund mm. which is supposed to be for retirement now, when you are 45 years and you have saved for 10 years, let's start from there. Then others will come later on because this is going to be continuous. Now, when I think they, they, they were passing, the, the word and instead of and changed to or. And you know, in the law, once you change any word like. So that's why NSSF was saying this bill to, in order to pay, we have to part with the almost four trillion. Mm. So they, 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 it brought a, a huge mm. amount of money. Mm. Maybe that one was not done in good faith mm. to fail the bill. Mm. So when we scrutinized the bill, when uh, there was that query, we said no. But what is the problem? Now you go through the bill and you scrutinize and you find that there was that problem. Mm. So we said no. The problem is here. So when we were going before the president, mm. we had facts and figures, mm. both, both of us. Mm. And we said, no, the money we need now is not four trillion or three. Mm. The money we need is 850 billion. billion. Mm. OK, let's put it at one trillion. One trillion, yes. Approximately. Now, why, when you put that, mm. and you know that now we have about 15 trillion, mm. when you take away one trillion, yeah. It will not affect even the interest. It cannot. Because we have been getting interest. You, 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 w they started with the 14, it came to 11, it w yeah. now it, it, it went up to 10. Yeah. So this is what we are trying to explain. And we agreed yeah. after analyzing all those issues. And it was a very, very high level meeting. Yeah. It was a dialogue. And I, and I want really to thank the president because he, he created time for us, he, the first meeting, the second meeting, and then also we gave ourselves two weeks. So we had enough time to discuss about this bill. And, and also we had to explain to the speaker because he was not following our, our, our dialogue with the, His Excellency. That is the time, I think, when he had problems. He was out of the country and so on. Mm. So we had to take him through for him to understand how the bill was uh, put in place and the, how we ac uh, actually have been mm. negotiating up to that high level. Mm. So uh, and we understood each other. We also understood his uh, mm. predicament because for him, he's trying to clean his house. He wants things to move lawfully mm. and and we agree with him because 
supposing we 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 do things and then somebody challenges this bill afterwards so he opened our 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 minds and we agreed with him but what we agreed is to fast track now this bill mm. the government should bring back the bill to the house and then it starts the process mm. very clearly uh where when you look at the savers with nssf of course they not everyone they're just about 1.2 million people that are saving with nssf yes. and when you look at the 20 percent at 40 Five years should be passed under that. Uh, do you think this is really going to be a solution to the problems of workers in this country? Now, this bill is because we are talking a lot about mid-term. Mm. This bill is opening up. They are about they are over 11 million workers. Mm. in this country mm. now those workers are supposed to be saving mm. now first of all this bill is going to improve the saving culture in this mm -hmm. country it's opening up mm. it's opening up for those who have only saving for few people if for it will now open up to 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 help and ensure that even informal sector is now coming on board mm. by opening this. Now the, the employers who have been uh, actually doing not service to us because mm. you find that he has more than 10 workers, 15, but he under declares and says he has lesser than five. So it was giving them mm. because liberty. Because if you have less than five, then you're not. You're not paying. Uh, yes. So now it's everybody is going mm. to what? To, to pay, save. To save. Now when you save when all those come on board, mm. it answers that question that more people are going to come on board, more money is going to come on in the economy, and more people will be helped. Mm. Now, another thing is that uh, this midterm is going to be continuous. Mm. Now, in that bill also, there is a, a provision whereby uh, when you're a disabled person and you have not been working for some time, you get your 75 percent mm. out of that mm. so the bill has a lot mm. and the, it's going to transform the lives of workers mm. that's why i was telling you that this bill is facilitating mm. not regulating mm. you you know sometimes you make a law which regulates but this particular law mm. does what it's going to facilitate, facilitate yes the transformation of people's lives mm. and, and and that the government should be happy with that yeah. and and even the the, the, the political leaders yeah. so my appeal now to 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 parliament yeah. to expedite this yeah. bill yeah. so that yeah. this bill comes yeah. and it can help the working people well, I have to remind our viewers that please you can be part of the topic of discussion this morning as we look at effectiveness of the NSSF amendment bill. And that is the number on your screen, 0709 uh, 60, uh, that is 0709-60-2592. Please send in your questions to the workers' representative here, not in parliament, but that is the National uh, Union of Trade, National Organization of Trade Union. Uh, what are your comments? And of course, as we look at this bill, uh, most so more emphasis and more attention has been drawn to the mid-term uh, benefits where those savings should get at least 20% of their savings. Should they clock 45 years and they have saved for, uh, that is, 10 years? And this is what Parliament is trying to look at and ratify this or even some changes of the bill before it's assented to by <coughs> the President. And this can be now uh, implemented and then we see how uh, this will be rolled out following a street time instrument that will therefore be given or uh, by the minister in charge of that docket labor uh, and social development of this country but we'll be reading your messages please keep them coming in kindly do not call on that line it is only for sms and whatsapp but do not call that line and i'll ensure i read messages as they come in and uh, 
Asha Wilson or will be responding to them. Uh, uh, still looking at this bill uh, already. I think the fear of depleting, the fear of rendering, that is the fund, uh, lacking capital, then having to borrow for the investment, still remains. We, we have been listening to some of the voices that are again saying, no, this may not be beneficial to our country. Even one suggested that, look, workers that are with NSSF, many of them, that means they have contracts, so they can have salary loans. Why are we disturbing a fund that is very developmental uh, towards our country, and even we are making huge investments? Uh, you see, my brother, uh, there is something you must know, that uh, the, the framers of this law wanted the workers to oh. benefit out of their, what? their savings. Oh. Now, NSSF, oh. the way it, has, it was structured, it had become a death, like a death saving. Most people have lost their life they have not got this money now time has come when both the saver the fund manager mm. and the government must benefit out of this money mm. but it was two parties now benefiting out of this money mm. the fund manager who is the nssf mm. and the government mm. leaving the saver the out. saver out mm. and uh, we want more benefits mm. that is the 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 role of this Mm. this this bill that it is creating more benefits mm. and when you have more benefits first of all you will have confidence of the savers yes as we talk that now, i agree with you as we talk now mm. people are very hostile mm. against the nssf mm. but because we the leaders must think ahead of that mm. and that's why we are saying instead of having mm. uh the money piled there mm. because now you have 15 trillion mm. One trillion can change the life of workers. Mm. The 15 trillion can make the fund manager and the what? Mm. And the government run around with the money mm. and still make the, the owner of the money benefit. Mm. And, and that is the role of this, mm. this fund. Mm. You, you know, we should not stick ourselves to where you, you think that when I'm walking with a stick, that's when I'm supposed to get this money. Mm. And then, uh, the, even the Which fund... Which some people believe that that was the initial uh, purpose of this fund. No, let it, let it start at 45. Mm. You start at 45, you have some money. If you squander it, if you do it, mm. then you will learn. When you get it at 55, mm. then you know what to do now. Mm. I will tell you that most, some people have died mm. today. The, their families have uh, accessed that money but they fight over it. Yes. You find that even the kids, mm. the, the beneficiaries, they, they, they are not benefiting out of it. Mm. Let the, now the owner of this money mm. start planning. You know life starts mm. at 45. Do you know that? Did you know that? Mm -mm. No, no, it starts when you're 18. No, no. no. Life starts at 45. You wait until you reach that age, you mm. will see. Mm. You, you will enjoy the life. <laughs> well, enjoying the life at 45. Yes. <laughs> I live every day. I do my best to enjoy every day that comes my way. But let me look at some of the messages that are coming in. Uh, we have here. Good morning. My name is David. And my question is, do we have any interest this year? That is a question. To you, uh, Yes, the interest is there. Mm. Uh, the interest is there. Mm. And the... I think the minister very soon will uh, mm. announce that. We have now a new board in place. Mm. I expect uh, mm. the new board and the, the management and the minister mm. to announce that. Mm. Well, another message uh, comes in from Nelson Mulungi. Morning, thanks for the show. Now that this bill will take care of every employee rather than a minimum of five, where does this leave employees like housemaids? employees on short-term contracts and uh, startups that need every coin to kick off now this this particular bill is now opening up for everybody to save the money now once you become a saver then you will benefit out of this 
but you cannot benefit out of this when you are not a member of this this fund so this bill is now covering that area mm. so uh, let let workers out there know that even if you are a, a shamba boy a housemaid or what you are going to now start benefiting out of because everybody is going to save and to will also improve the saving culture in this country okay uh, well, we are still getting in more messages. Uh, keep them coming. And of course, uh, my guests in studios will be responding to your questions regarding this bill and of course the fund where many are wondering, uh, is this money for the employers? Is it for government? Who owns this money? The savers. Me and you who save that money. Mm -hmm. We are the owners of that money. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the NSSF, those are our workers. Hmm. The government is a custodian of the, the of our money. It is, is their work is to hmm. to to ensure hmm. that the money is invested, is uh, hmm. is safe, and so on. And also, in case of anything, uh, whether hmm. the, the the fund is run down, the government is supposed to pay me, hmm. pay you, and that's what I want. In, I, I am I'm putting it in a very clear. Hmm. Hey. So the, that money. NSSF money mm. is savers money. Mm. It's not owned by NSSF, it's mm. not owned by government. Mm. These are stewards. Uh, yeah, they, those are stewards. They are supposed to ensure that that money is safe, they invest it and so on, mm. on our behalf. Mm. Well, I want to thank everybody who has sent in the message. I see a Kaka Francis, thank you for the message. And also uh, my colleague here, who is uh, Director of Certified High Schools, Shironko, thank you for the message. Another message coming in, thanks so much for the program. I'm Solomon from Kabali. Why doesn't the chairman, uh, that is National Organization of Trade Unions, tell us why NSSF claims it couldn't afford to pay a given percentage of beneficiaries yet it got the saving from them why has nsf put the interest of the political regime on a higher table than the actual beneficiaries who are the workers well that is solomon from kabale uh, solomon should know that uh, government in power is the one supposed to be in charge of anything and the uh, nssf we are now making the law mm -hmm. to ensure that we access this money because mm. you know they are custodians they they they, they are fund managers mm. they can only manage but they cannot remove that money unless there's law and that's why we are now struggling to ensure that this law is passed mm -hmm. in uh, this bill is passed into law and that's why we are amending the law to ensure that this 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 nssf benefits workers as i said before mm. And we want it to benefit workers more than benefiting the government or benefiting NSSF mm. as, the, as the fund manager. Mm. Well, time is not so much on our side, but let me have your final remarks. Maybe a message of hope to many savers who seemingly now may be doubting if this will see the light of day. No, I want to assure workers that this time round, we have increased the speed of making sure this bill is passed. Even after this show, I'm going to meet the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development. We have already had a meeting with the Speaker. With the President, we finished with him. There's a good political will on this bill. And I want workers to know that President is in full support of this bill. And he wants this bill to be passed as soon as possible. So there's a hope, and I want you workers to support our, our, our advocacy so that we get this bill within a record of one month or two months. Mm. And uh, I've also given mm. timeline. This, this week, I want to see my members of parliament, workers members of parliament, very active in that parliament, mm. trying to make sure where the, the, the issue, where, where, where are we supposed to do this. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy they have taken it up and they are working so we are working as a team you workers out there also talk to your members of parliament tell them to pass this bill ratify it as soon as possible so that can go back to to president for what for signature 
And I want to thank His Excellency the President. I want to thank the Speaker because he gave us audience. And my take now is Minister of Gender to expedite the process. Mm. And we see this law coming out. Well, I want to thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, Asha Awere Wilson for finding time, who happens to be the Chairman General of the National Organization of Trade Unions uh, in Uganda, but also the second Vice President of the Great Horn of Africa Trade Union Confederation that brings together eight countries uh, as voices for the workers for having full time. He's very optimistic that well, this bill will see the light of day and workers will be able to access a percentage of their savings if they have clocked about uh, 45 years, saved for 10 years. We pray and hope this is the light of the day. But I also want to thank you so much for your messages. Some were directed to NSSF. And I just pray and hope that uh, we shall have time when they'll be able to answer some of these uh, questions that you're putting forward. Well, I want to leave you with Ruben to take you through the world of sports. Have a blessed day. Keep it on UBC TV.